and I will be introducing our next keynote speaker, who is the group president and chief executive officer of MTN Group. He has held that position since 1st September 2020. And prior to that time, he served as the MTN Group's chief financial officer since 2017. Before joining MTN, Raf served as the chief executive officer for Old Mutual Emerging Markets, providing financial services solution to individuals and corporates across 19 countries in Africa, Latin America, as well as Asia. Raf is a seasoned business leader with experience in engineering, construction, financial services, telecommunications. Raf, this afternoon, will speak on the topic, Building a Digital Economy for Nigeria. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the podium Raf Peter, Group President and Chief Executive Officer of MTN Group. Frank and the, the team at, um, at Business Day, it's an absolute pleasure and a privilege to be here uh, representing the MTN Group Forums such as this are very critical in normal times, but they become even more critical at a time when Nigeria has gone through a political transition, and at a time when Nigeria's ambition has uh, been uh, clearly spelled out by the President of African Development Bank, Dr. Adesina, around the point that it is time for Nigeria to roar. So this, I would like to commend Frank and your team for hosting this. And as you said, I was in Abuja uh, last week, uh, Thursday and Friday. And uh, I think, as you said, you were suspicious that I would not turn up, um, you know, having gone to Johannesburg. But this was an important enough session of CEOs coming together that it was um, it, uh, very important for me, representing the MTN group, to be back here and share our thoughts and perspectives around how we see the world and how we see the place of Nigeria within that world and within that context. I would like to start off by recognizing uh, the governors, uh, the governor of Edo State, uh, Mr. Obaseki, the governor of Jigawa State, um, Alhaj Uma Namadi, the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Adesina, the ambassador of Indonesia, uh, thank you for being with us here. I will share some data that uh, relates to uh, Indonesia and you know, holding MTN shares, many of them international in the US, Europe, and Asia Pacific, what they tell us is this policy direction as set by the president will stand uh, Nigeria in good stead to attract the investment FDI that it needs. If we look again on how Nigeria ranks, and sometimes you can see data and points of view as an issue where you know, we could be better, um, but also as an opportunity. So this is basically ranking Nigeria across a couple of metrics. First really is around the internet adoption, uh, how much internet, mobile broadband, and fixed uh, broadband subscription. And I want to focus on the last uh, chart at the bottom, because this is the one that I think uh, often is not really uh, debated extensively, which is if you want fast, reliable, low-cost internet connectivity, there needs to be sufficient investment in infrastructure to enable uh, people in their homes and in their businesses, formal and informal, to be able to access the internet, the digital economy. And what you see there is that Nigeria, compared to peer groups, there's a peer group of 10 there, which uh, has got Morocco, has got Kenya, it's got Ghana, uh, it's got Senegal, and some of the Asia Pacific countries of similar size, is the ranking to date has not been as strong as 
you know, uh, Nigeria would probably want. And even when you compare them, particularly with international benchmarks, you take China and the US as benchmarks, we've got a lot of way to go. So one point I would like to leave is that if this vision of a strong digital economy in Nigeria is to be realized, one thing that has to happen is really a significant amount of investment in, in fiberizing Nigeria. Nigeria has decent fiber, but there's a lot more fiberization of the country all the way in the rural areas that will still be required. I'd also like to just pick up on the next slide the point I wanted to raise around um, the public service. Um, a lot of focus is really on the private sector in terms of uh, the opportunities that come uh, from uh, the digital economy. But let's think about the, the public service uh, as a proxy. Again, you see the benchmarks relative to other jurisdictions, Africa versus other regions. Um, we don't even on the African continent have any um, meaningful proportion of countries that are seen as very high in e-enabling government services. And I think when you, you look at uh, the ranking of Nigeria versus, again, uh, a peer group of 193 countries, Nigeria is ranking at 140. Again, it shows where the country is today, but it doesn't show the full potential of the country, which is with the right policies, with the right investments and skills, Nigeria can obviously you know, progress and do even better. If I move to the next slide, and um, just looking at um, digital skills. Now, this is a chart, again, um, done by McKinsey, where they've used uh, LinkedIn as a proxy uh, against um, a, a set of uh, African countries and against international benchmarks around what are the digital skills you need today for today's digital economy. Now, the chart is obviously very detailed, and you might not be able to read from the back, but um, it looks at uh, things such as um, social media, graphic design, digital literacy, all the way down to uh, computer hardware, uh, enterprise software, uh, artificial intelligence, ranking uh, Nigeria against uh, a whole bunch of uh, other African countries. So you can see that Nigeria is doing well. I mean, the darker the blue, it means that the skills are high. But many of the skills that are future facing, and we talk about artificial intelligence, you see that Africa is not indexing well, Nigeria is not indexing well. Again, one may see that as a challenge, but it's also an opportunity for the country to advance its growth agenda by leveraging technology. And uh, you'll see South Africa is a 17 percent and Nigeria at 4%. Uh, my point of view is that Nigeria, with the skills and the vibrancy of the youth that we have in this country, should be able to leapfrog and actually color that map you know, absolutely dark blue uh, you know, over the near term. Just moving on to the next slide. Um, again, there are some challenges that we face coming, bringing this much closer to home uh, within the context of the business that we run, uh, the business that's run by Carl Toriel and his team. Uh, there are some challenges today really around connecting to the mobile internet. Um, the issue today is not really coverage. The, the, the issue if you really zone in on why we're not able to get internet penetration as deep uh, and wide as possible, it's called the usage gap. Uh, the GSMA talk about the usage gap. A lot of investment has gone in to build networks, towers, to uh, fiberize networks and so forth. But really key issue that we face today is really around usage. And usage has two components to it. One is affordability, um, generally of um, the services. And then the second issue is really the cost of handsets, data capable handsets that can connect people to the internet. Um, India has done some interesting work um, and they've launched um, a $12 data capable smartphone. Um, it's very early days, they launched it last month. But if they're able to do that, they're gonna be able to capture 250 million people in India who are still in the 2G era. They're still trapped in the 2G era. There are many Nigerians today who are still trapped in the 2G era and are not benefiting uh, from 4G and actually now 5G services that we've been able to roll out. So the usage gap is really the challenge. So how is, um, the team in Nigeria 
really looking at it. At MTN, we have what we call the Chase Framework, coverage, handsets, affordability, service, and education. The real critical bottleneck we need to de uh, deal with is, as, as I mentioned, is the service one, and that's really got to do with affordability and handsets. The handset is really a big dilemma and really requires the government to think about issues such as how do we attract um, the original equipment manufacturers to be able to look to assemble or do the final assembly in country and provide some incentive and crowd them in to be able to bring uh, handsets below the $20 price point. I won't spend too much time on the sectors. Um, you all well know these sectors that the digital economy uh, represents. I think the critical thing on the digital economy is that it's pervasive and across all sectors. It's not a sector in of itself. It cuts through all sectors. In Nigeria today, the four largest uh, sectors are really uh, telecommunications, uh, B2B services, B2B marketplace, and B2C marketplaces. Now, I know there's a panel discussion that's coming and I'll leave them to talk to, but I think there is effort and focus that really needs to be put around thinking beyond just uh, the public sector, as I mentioned earlier on, but critical sectors to the Nigerian economy, particularly education, health, and agriculture, and much has already been said by President Adesina. So if we think about education, why should a child in the rural areas suffer uh, a poor education even though they're very intelligent? The digital connectivity and the digital economy should be able to close that. We should not be having 20 ch million children who have no access to uh, the, the, the internet or good schooling. There are solutions really around that. If we think about health, I'm gonna quickly move on, just mindful of my own time. Um, health again is another opportunity why are people not having access to expert medical device when today with 5G you can actually have a remote surgeon helping a, a doctor in a local environment to be able to do the surgery or to advise on something that is life critical. Again, on agriculture, I won't spend too much time uh, covering the agriculture point, but again, why should um, there be limitations to rural farmers? when you can create markets for them and create a global market, whether it's cassava or whatever it is that they have as a product that they want to take to market, they should be able to understand what the weather is going to be like tomorrow, what is the price of a particular commodity, and how to run their own business and create the world as uh, ultimately a market. Again, I'm just whizzing through these. Obviously, there's a lot of detail we can share further. Um, and just moving on to the next slide, I just wanted to also include financial inclusion. A lot has been done now to really drive financial inclusion. The PSB license regime that's been issued, I think really helps going forward. Um, but again, it's an opportunity for Nigeria to really punch above uh, where it's been um, over the last couple of years, given um, the fact that license regime and capital is coming through. I want to spend a bit of time talking about the mega trends because we do have um, some trends that are at play and some of those trends today um, may seem like, um, for our markets, may seem like they're in the future but they're today. So we as MTN are, you know, thinking through these trends and these are the trends also that Nigeria will need to work through. Uh, 5G has come to Nigeria. Artificial intelligence has been around for a while. Um, and um, we're also looking at cloud computing, robotics and automation were mentioned earlier by President Adesina. But over the long term, there are many things that for us may seem long term that are already here. Uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, blockchain, digital currencies, 6G, the Chinese are already exploring 6G. Whilst in uh, Nigeria, we've just launched 5G. And you've got artificial general intelligence that's also coming you guys are all playing with ChatGPT and, uh, and so forth, and that's gonna drive another productivity revolution similar to when the internet came on. So there are these mega trends that are at play, and Nigeria would need to find this uh, 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 place, and importantly, you know, uh, deliver, deliver and develop the skills that would be necessary to uh, leverage on this technology. I wanna spend a bit of time on key policy and regulatory levers, because it is so important to be very conscious and harmonizing around some of these things. And I would like to laud the Nigerian government and the regulators, particularly the NCC, who have actually pushed ahead 
with many of these that are needed as key policy and regulatory frameworks. Um, sufficient spectrum, really key. Um, access to low band and uh, mid band spectrum to drive 5G. Applications around tax uh, policies, we find that the countries that are thoughtful about attracting investment with tax policies and incentives, and also certainty about the tax regimes are all doing well. There's a need for a tariff regime that creates a vibrant competitive context, uh, as well as to attract investment. Nothing like certainty around tariff uh, and um, the, the, the tax policy to attract investment. I'd also say that there is a need for transparency um, as the technologies are evolving. In the old days, there was a fixed industry, a wireless industry, and so forth. There's a convergence in all of these things, and the need for a fair uh, licensing and taxation environment for terrestrial, i.e. the networks you see, non-terrestrial being the low Earth orbit satellites that you hear about, Starlink, etc., as well as the OTT services like Netflix. Very important for the Nigerian government to ensure that there is a harmonization and fairness for all market participants so that there is no arbitrage and actually the country loses uh, important revenue um, when a policy decision has been made unintendedly to go in another direction. I won't uh, emphasize the last point because I think uh, President Adesina really did cover it, which is really about the need for reliable grid power. Networks in the digital economy requires reliable power. I was stunned with the statistic that said, you know, in South Korea, the power company is only down for two minutes, uh, you know, within a year. So these are some of the things to kind of stimulate thinking around what are the policy levers, particularly around the digital infrastructure that will be needed going over time. So in conclusion, Nigeria is going to be that lion uh, that President Adesina uh, mentioned. It's going to roar and it's going to be a top five, maybe even top four, uh, you know, e global economy by 2075. There is enormous opportunity in driving the digital economy. Nigeria is just at the start of the beginning with 6% of GDP, um, which is, you know, driven by the economy. It can get up to 15%, if not higher. Um, there is obviously a lot of um, growth in the telecommunications uh, space. Um, in terms of mobile connectivity, but there's still a lot more to do and to evolve into reliable, fast 5G networks. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, we need investment. Our analysis is that over the next five years, Nigeria, just on digital infrastructure, will need 12 to $15 billion of infrastructure investments, building towers, building networks, bringing 5G on, fiberizing those networks, 12 to 15 do uh, billion dollars the next five years only. Um, and obviously the regulatory environment that would, be, would be needed to attract local and international capital to drive that. And, you know, it's really, really important, as I mentioned earlier on, is that there's a conducive regulatory um, and harmonized framework towards the end goal of ensuring every Nigerian is benefiting from uh, the, the, the digital economy not only people who are in formal employment, but also people who are the small, medium enterprises who are the bulk of Nigerians. Frank and the team at Business Day, it's again, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation and opportunity to spark some debate and interest. Thank you.